Good evening, welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. The Queensland Government has announced tough new laws to crack down on criminal gangs in the state. The move comes after two men were arrested over a violent bikey brawl on the Gold Coast on Friday night. Gold Coast Police arrested 20 bikey gang members during the public brawl in a Broad Beach restaurant. Four police officers were also injured while trying to stop the brawl. Today, two men faced Southport Magistrates Court charged with a fray. One of the accused is alleged to have started the Gold Coast brawl. Both men have been released on bail. The state government has responded to the violence by announcing tough new laws to deal with criminal gangs. Among other things, the new laws will ban gang members from gathering in groups and stopping them from owning, operating or working in tattoo parlours. We will do as a government whatever needs to be done to ensure that Queenslanders don't feel frightened and intimidated by this sort of criminal gang activity. The new laws will also include a minimum 12 months jail for serious assault of a police officer and will give police the power to confiscate motorbikes and other vehicles. These people have always operated on the fringe of the law. They've always uh, sought to, to push the boundaries. Mr Sini says these laws are intended to be among the toughest in the country, if not the world. And the government is adamant that it will crack down on organised crime, not just on the Gold Coast, but wherever it might occur. Luke Rutledge, QT News. Brisbane's real estate market is on the rise, following a slump in the years after the global financial crisis. Auctions are showing the biggest growth in the current market. House auctions are sparking the most interest in the rising market. Over the weekend, the number of people going to auctions in Brisbane doubled, and almost half of the 170 properties up for auction were sold. It's definitely due to high demand for properties and high demand puts people into competition when uh, supply is low. So auction is the best way to create a premium price. Brisbane's northern suburbs of Wilston and Woolawan are proving to be the top performers in part because of the number of schools in the area, but it's also tied up in supply and demand. So we've come from the situation we've got low housing stock and suddenly we've got confidence in the market, we've got low interest rates, and that can only lead to high prices. Brisbane's housing market has taken longer to bounce back because of what happened in the global financial crisis. Queensland had a little bit more activity than Sydney and Melbourne after the GFC. They went down a little quicker than we did. Brisbane had the biggest house price increase of all capital cities in August, but spring is expected to bring even more growth. That's because traditionally there is an increase in sales in the lead up to Christmas. And further on, economists say investment properties are likely to be the biggest growth area over the next 12 months. Martina Kulchik, QUT News. We've had dry July, October and November are on the way. But tomorrow is the start of another fundraiser called the Coffee Break Project. It urges people to go a whole month without coffee. One in five Australians will suffer from a mental illness in their lifetime. This booth symbolises the isolation many mental illness sufferers experience. We thought we would bring attention to that by getting people to give up coffee because a lot of people can't live without it. The funds will go towards allowing mental illness sufferers to have someone close at hand to talk to. The Coffee Break project currently has over 100 volunteers. They basically take them for a weekly outing and it's usually like a coffee and a chat um, and something as simple as that actually does break the isolation. Whilst raising awareness about mental health is welcomed, one coffee shop owner suggests the project could have been done differently. People look at coffee as an experience, it's their mental health break away from the office. Even though this cafe owner thinks focusing on coffee isn't ideal, she supports the campaign. Organisers are hoping to raise $30,000. Donations can be made online at coffeebreak.org.au. Elizabeth Lyons, QUT News. Recognition today for everyday Queenslanders who are making extraordinary contributions to the community. They've won Pride of Australia awards for being selfless, inspiring and courageous. These Queenslanders deserve more than just a thank you. They've all done something to change or save lives without ever asking for credit. People like 74-year-old Graham Pampling, who dedicates his time and most of what he earns teaching vision-impaired children to touch type. 
He's been busking in Queen Street Mall for 25 years now, his main source of income after he lost his own sight. I enjoy helping and assisting other people to do something that I can do so that they can learn. Winners of the Heroism Medal were the three men from the RACQ Capricorn Rescue 300 helicopter crew. It was just you know, one, of the, one of those jobs that you, know, you, you get the call, you do the planning, you've done the training and you know, we went out there and um, did, the, did the best we could. The ten categories range from environment to community spirit. Outstanding bravery from children to adults alike. And still none of these Queenslanders consider themselves a hero. I just consider myself a committed human being. Maritza Munoz, QUT News. Hawthorne Hawks players continue to bask in the glory of Saturday's AFL Grand Final win. The Hawks put last year's disappointments behind them with a 15-point triumph over Fremantle Dockers. The final siren signalled their redemption. Dawson deprives him. They've done it. The best team all year. Having lost in 2012, Hawthorne stormed back to secure their 11th Premiership. They simply outran and outplayed the Dockers in front of a 100,000 strong MCG crowd. The Hawks continue their celebrations as premiers in Tasmania today, following yesterday's presentation at Glenferry Oval where over 10,000 fans turned out to congratulate their heroes. The coach told fans he was confident his side would get over the line. Until about the last minute of the game when they needed to kick three goals in a minute, we knew we had it then, so uh, we started celebrating. A supportive fan base welcomed home the less cheery Dockers in Perth, but their chief is proud. Last night at the function, the mood was probably a little bit uh, solemn to start with, but once the night progressed, I think uh, everyone started to recognise the effort of the season. Brisbane Lions may have missed the finals for the last four seasons, but new coach Justin Lepich plans to turn their fortunes around. I guess when there's a fresh start, there's always new ideas, so I'm hopeful to bring that, obviously, originally, but the, you know, in the long-term view, it's how, I mean, how we can be consistently in the top half of the ladder, if not top four of the ladder. The returning local hero will be hoping to fill these stands and the hearts of the fans with hope of a fourth premiership. John Beatty, QT News. The Manly Sea Eagles have officially begun embracing the hype of Grand Final Week by facing the media at Brookvale Oval. Whilst their Grand Final opponents, the Roosters, headed down for a recovery session at Bondi. Manly faced a big media pack at Brookvale Oval. The team was all smiles as they posed for the photo ahead of the big game. Manly star Jamie Bura says the boys are looking forward to the week ahead. Uh, it's, it's when you want to be playing uh, at the end of the year, you know, two teams left and the, the big prize. So, uh, yeah, very exciting week. He says for Manly to win on Sunday, they need to restrict the Roosters forwards. Well, they've got a big pack of forwards, a uh, really physical team, uh, and if we can uh, limit their forwards to a degree, uh, I like to think our highs and back line, you know, will have the class. The Roosters spent their morning in the famous Bondi surf. In the QRL Grand Final, the Mackay Cutters won the Intra Super Cup after a nail-biting finish against the East Tigers. The Cutters' 25-20 victory was scored when Anthony Mitchell scored a try in the 79th minute. Mitchell runs! Anya Simonson, QT News. Tennis Australia is on the search for the nation's fastest server. At Carindale today, the AO Blitz clocked the speeds of shoppers to see if Brisbane has what it takes. The AO Blitz is travelling the nation ahead of next year's Australian Open. For a gold coin donation, players are able to clock their top serving speeds. Some may even be hoping to have one of these trophies in their sights in years to come. Get people around Australia to start picking up a racket and play tennis. Um, we're visiting 104 communities between now and the Australian Open. The drive will raise money for breast and prostate cancer research in Australia. The first $10,000 raised will be matched by Tennis Australia. The Guinness World Record for the fastest tennis serve lies with Australian Samuel Groff, who clocked up 263 kilometres per hour. While speeds at Carindale didn't reach that record, the participants are pretty happy with themselves. I think my fastest was about 112. Are you happy with that? Yeah, it's pretty good. So far, the fastest serve has been clocked at 186 kilometres per hour at Noosa. Brisbane kids haven't yet matched this speed, but who knows? 
After a bit of training, they might just have the fastest serve here at the Brisbane International one day. The tennis season is just around the corner, with tickets for the Brisbane International on sale this Wednesday. Eliza Jane Mann, QT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Across the southeast and relatively fine for most of the state. The Gold Coast and Sunshine Coasts hitting tops of 25 and 26. Ipswich had a start of 13, reaching a top of 27. A chance of rain across most of the nation tomorrow. A warm and wet day for Sydney with a top of 29. Melbourne can expect its blustery weather to clear up, top of 20. Perth and Darwin missing out on the showers, reaching tops of 20 and a scorching 35. The forecast for Queensland and Mount Isa is expected to hit at the 38 mark, followed by Longreach 37. Both expecting storms. Fine for most of the southeast coast, Brisbane and Mackay expecting a few of those thundery showers. Townsville and Cairns reaching 29. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days, tomorrow and Wednesday both expecting possible showers 30 with Thursday heating up and staying fine at tops of 31. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT web news. Goodbye. Goodbye.